game after game after game, I realize now what is most important in my life. Football. Show me something more thrilling than a perfect volley. Tell me you've never dreamed the immaculate strike, been part of that moment when an entire nation holds its breath. Tell me that football is not our one common language when the whole planet stops for 90 minutes to be witness to that one thing we all understand. Yeah, you can tell me I'm wrong. Some may say it's just a game, but this is about heroes and tribes, loyalty and devotion. It's our commitment and our passion, our battle and our belief. This is our faith. This is the beautiful game. Wallace Park. Named after Julia Wallace as part of the Parks for the Public Legislation in 1956, it is home to tennis players, cricketers, social footballers, ducks and the Wallace Park Wanderers. Established in 2011, the Wanderers have gone from strength to strength. Increasing in numbers, skill and fans over the years, the club has flown through the qualification stages for the prestigious Ethkick Tournament, a one-of-a-kind competition which witnesses the largest official gathering of ethnic footballers in the Southern Hemisphere. This was a huge achievement for the Wallace Park Wanderers, as they were finally in the hunt for some silverware to add to their rather dusty looking trophy cabinet. There was, however, one barrier remaining, one large barrier, the huge lack of ethnic diversity required for the tournament focused on the celebration of international pride in football. This issue was solved when the club went professional, investing in groundsmen, a team kit and a new team bus. The only thing left to do was join the transfer market. Hamza Arafir was a free agent of star quality and the club signed him up quicker than a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> As news of this new signing spread like wildfire, attention was drawn towards the Wanderers, and when Abhijit Singh showed interest in joining the team, the club was looking sharp and battle ready to get onto the pitch and fight it out against some of the most elite ethnic teams in the world. Welcome to Wallace Park Football Club. How does it feel to be a Wanderer? Yeah, first of all, I'm very proud of being here. It's a big club, and when you arrive, it's always a big thing. I'm very pleased to be here, and I'm looking forward to getting started. I'm very happy to be here. How did it feel the first time you heard that the Wallace Park Wanderers were interested in bringing you here? Well, first of all, it's obviously the agents who work on, the, on those things. And I was still playing, so they didn't really tell me a lot. But once I heard they were interested in signing me, I was ready to go. It was always Wallace for me. Like I said, I'm extremely happy to be here. What's been the reaction of your family and friends? Well, I tried to keep it as quiet as I could because I know there are always a lot of things that have to be finalised before you actually sign. And I kept them quiet because I know then they'll get excited. And I think they're happy as well. Hopefully they can come over for a lot of games. And I think they'll be proud being on the first and then to step onto the pitch. As the days turned into nights and the weeks into months, anticipation was fizzing for the upcoming tournament. The Wallace Park Wanderers were now on point. They were drawing crowds to their training sessions who would cheer when nutmegs or wonder goals were pulled off. The expectation was for the new signings to finally bring glory to the club, but this wasn't to be. As the Bhutan barbarians tore the wanderers apart like a wild lion destroys its prey, it became clear that the tournament, which had promised so much, was going to give so little. The year's investments, trainings and new boots had counted for nothing. 
Years of loyalty, potential success and hopeful dominance came to an end that day. That one day at the Manawatu Arena. Wallace Park, the transfers and the trophies.